I wanted to talk about my journey with jujitsu today. I've alluded to it a few times in previous videos, but I don't think I've ever really talked about what my journey with this incredible martial art has been like. Um, some of the challenges that you know arise with starting something like this and also just the general sense of what the last two years of my life have been like since starting so I haven't scripted anything I can't really narrow it down there's so many things that I've experienced in the last two years where my life has sort of changed for the better I honestly don't have anything negative that has come from my journey that I feel because when any kind of negativity arises in my life. I sort of think back to how I feel when I enter a class or when I'm in an uncomfortable position in class, on the mat, off the mat, with whatever ex I'm experiencing in life. And I'm able to sort of smooth out whatever's going on in my mind by realizing that I've been in terrible <laughs> positions before and I've gotten out of them. And it's never been something that has taken me down from a, from a humanistic perspective standpoint, right? I've always overcome it. And I didn't feel that way before I started doing jujitsu. I was always somebody that held on to all the negativity and kind of let it fester or ruminate or think that there was no way out, play the chronic victim card. Even if it was something where people would say to me, oh, Joe, you know, you have, you're, you're so chill. You're so relaxed all the time, man. Like, how do you do it? Internally, I wasn't. I was feeling awful. It's a funny story. My wife had suggested that I get into it over two years ago when I was sort of faced with, do I use the money that I had allocated from, um, from a work stipend, from like a wellness stipend, do I use that money towards her to get her something or, you know, do I use it towards me? And she didn't want me to get her anything. She wanted me to get something for myself that I always knew that I wanted and needed. And she suggested jujitsu. And to be honest, when she suggested it, suggested it, I was scared. I was like, I don't want to go on a mat and get choked out and get hurt by people. That sounds really awful. That was my knowledge of jujitsu at the time was you go into a place where these big, scary men and women are trained fighters. They all have cauliflower ear, which in a funny way, it's all full circle because I'm starting to get a little bit on my right ear and I kind of enjoy the way that it looks and feels. But side note, you know, I used to look at people with cauliflower ear like they were just chronic bullies. And I grew up in a in a small town in New Jersey where it was a bully culture where you, you know, people bullied people constantly in that town. And I'm sure it was like that for a lot of you and a lot of people in whatever town you grew up in. But when you're around people picking on people physically and emotionally as a child, and then somebody tells you, hey, there's an academy where you can go and you can just, you know, learn how to choke people out. Some people might look at it and say, oh, that's a really cool way for me to build self-defense skills and stamina and emotional strength. And other people might be scared shitless and say, why the hell am I going to go into a place where I'm going to be hurt and made fun of and picked on for not knowing what I'm doing? My experience with it was the polar opposite of that. If we rewind back to 2004 when I was in high school, I went to one trial class and at the time they were very inviting and welcoming to me but I didn't feel as though it was the right environment. There was still a lot of that bullying culture in my town including from the uh, the head instructor at the time. I saw a lot of people that reminded me of the bully culture in my town. There were a lot of people after high school, early college, maybe middle-aged men that were going there and they had that sort of, you're a pussy, you know, like that kind of feeling that was so rampant in the early 2000s, late 90s and early 2000s, where people would just look at people and say really hurtful things to them. And it was kind of like this, we're hazing you mentality, but in reality, people were just hurting people's feelings and stunting them in life. And I'll probably make a video on that one day because it's an awful thing. When I walked into the trial class, I learned some stuff. I felt that I had a general idea of what jujitsu would be like if I started, but I didn't do it. I didn't stick with it. I did one class. I never went back. I saw a few people around town that I knew did it. And I always just thought it wasn't for me. Up until two years ago in 2022, when I stepped foot on the mat, that was the only training I'd ever had aside from wrestling around with my friends. When I entered the door, I was really scared and intimidated because there, even the white belts all knew what they were doing. And I mean, I felt like I knew nothing. 
I didn't know where to, to put my body. I barely knew how to break fall. I didn't know how to hip escape. I didn't know how to front roll or back roll. I was definitely somebody that thought internally, you played college baseball, you're an athletic kid, you're an athletic dude, you're gonna be fine at this. But when it came down to actually learning and putting my body in those uncomfortable situations, I was like a fish out of water. But the instructors were awesome. And they made me feel as though we can go whatever pace works. In the beginning, jujitsu was only maybe once, twice per week for me. I didn't roll after practice. I didn't want to live train with people because I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. My stamina sucked. I gassed myself out all the time. I had no idea what I was doing. And maybe on the occasional time that I that I was able to do something that worked, it was all luck. It was just all me using spazzy white belt luck and I'd find out afterwards that it wasn't the right move and I probably did something wrong and I always did something wrong. I developed a lot of friends in this academy. We would talk after class and we would talk before and we developed a, an Instagram and WhatsApp and text group where we would share memes with each other and chat with each other. And it did become this little sort of brother and sisterhood that we'd all have together where I started looking forward to going to class. And that's something I didn't think was going to happen. I thought I'm so tired all the time. I am waking up. I'm working all day. I am traveling a lot for work. How am I going to find time and energy to work out in a capacity like this with jujitsu. It just isn't gonna work for me. Side note, when I used to work in New York City, I used to walk from our home where we live. I would take the train into New York. I would walk about 20 or 30 minutes down to 25th and Madison, and then I would walk back later on and walk back to Grand Central, and I would take the train back home. When I got home, I had no energy left in the tank at all. I thought because I walked all day, I was exercising and I was working out. It turns out it couldn't have been anything further from the truth. I went from having a lot of muscle and endurance and stamina and strength to letting my 20s and early 30s get away from me, where I wasn't out of shape, but I wasn't in good shape at all. So when I started doing jujitsu, that was really apparent to me, that you think you're in good shape, but until you're in a situation where you're sparring with somebody and you're ultimately mimicking what fighting for your life could be like if you don't have stamina and energy and understand what you're doing it will be a matter of life and death and that is what really triggered the first like motivating factor in my world where I said I want to stick with this my first live sparring like five minute round with somebody I gassed myself in 30 seconds and I got tapped. And it showed me that I had no idea what I was doing. And if this was a real situation, if I was at a bar or if I was at a restaurant or somebody picked a fight with me and I thought that I had, oh, I'm strong, I'm tough, I could throw a punch, absolutely not. So when I started realizing that is what real life will be like if you don't know what you're doing, it started motivating me to going more. And then what happened was I started going more and I had more energy. I started drinking less coffee. I started sleeping better. I started eating healthier and I wanted to go to class. Right now, it's 10.30 in the morning. I worked this morning and I can't wait to go on the mat in the next half an hour because for me, this gives me energy throughout the day. It sounds counterintuitive, but when I'm rolling and I'm working on myself and I'm learning new moves and I'm learning how to properly defend something or how to properly attack, it gives me more energy and I will have a better day and a better weekend because of it. I look forward to class tomorrow. I look forward to class on Sunday. I look forward to class on Monday. And when I was not doing something like this, just going to the gym every now and then and doing a program I found online for a few months and then kind of losing interest, I was not in remotely the same close type of emotional and physical shape that I am right now. So my journey in the last two years, I never thought I would be 38 years old and in better shape than I was when I was 25. Honestly, it's something that I never, I thought as I get older, I was just gonna lose muscle and lose endurance and start getting you know, closer to that muscular atrophy that every man and woman is afraid is going to ultimately happen to us one day. But it really is up to us. So if there's one point that I can really make in this video is that, well, two things. If you're going to the right academy, you are not going to get be bullied. You should never be bullied. And if there are bullies there that are making you feel like you're not good because you're a white belt or you don't know what you're doing or they're making fun of you or rolling their eyes at you, then get the fuck out and find a different academy where you can find people that actually want you to cultivate the best version of you, right? That is rule number one. Do not go to an academy. You could research places. You can go. Reddit is a great tool where if you're living in an area and you type in on the BJJ or Jiu Jitsu subreddit, hey, I'm looking for a gym here. Where should I go? People will tell you. 
And that is partly how I found the spot that I'm at right now in Southern California, because I switched academies over from an amazing academy to an academy that works even better for me right now, for my work schedule, for my life schedule, and they were so inviting and they are cultivating the best version of myself and the best version of everybody in that class. So that is rule number one. Rule number two, or <laughs> rule number one, rule number two, that is point number one that I really wanna make that really changed my life is that I found a group of people that are my people, that I feel like I want to be around all the time. Number two, when you're doing what you love, it will give you energy and drive to keep going. How many times have you found a program online or heard about a diet or a lifestyle change and you get really into it for a little bit and then you lose interest right away? That was me for the longest time. And I played college baseball and I had a structure and I had days where I knew I was training, days that I knew that I was playing, days that I knew that I was off. And for me at the time, it worked and I loved it and it kept me in incredible shape. But when that ended, my identity went from, I was a college athlete to what the heck am I gonna do now? And for many years, I just did, you know, P90X or joined a bunch of gyms in wherever, whatever city I was living. But I would lose interest very quickly because I wasn't working and sharpening my mind and my ego because that's the other thing about this. You have to check your ego at the door and be okay with the fact that every single time you roll, you are going to be learning. If you're a highest degree black belt or a, an entry level white belt, the well still runs deep and you never stop learning. Our professors go to seminars all the time to learn from black belts in other parts of the world that teach them things that they never knew. And the collective unconscious keeps this sport evolving. Moves now were not really even considered anything that could possibly be done 20 and 30 years ago, or even 10 years ago. And I think it's a beautiful thing to watch these academies pop up everywhere, really good ones, and help the general public how to be a better person, a stronger person. I love seeing children starting in jujitsu early because I wish that I had that when I was growing up. I wish that I had the mental strength to know if somebody's picking on me, I know how to defend myself. And I'm not a fighter. I'm not a violent person. I don't condone violence. Everybody asks me that knows me in my personal life. Oh man, you know jujitsu. What would you do if this happened? I say, if anything happens in the real world, you try to get out of it as fast as possible. You try to run away. You try to walk away. You try to use your words to get out of it. But if you can't, then that is where this tool is the most useful thing that will be in your arsenal. The real world is a, can be a scary place. And I'm sure you've seen videos and read things online about attacks in different cities and people un feeling unsafe walking down the street. And I'm sure you've seen videos about, hey, this guy knew jujitsu and look at what he did to this assailant. And that is what keeps me feeling really confident every day. It has helped my relationship with my wife. It has helped my relationship at work. It's helped my relationship with my family, my friends, everybody. I feel more stoic. I feel like I can handle anything. Honestly, I could be in a room with the heads of whatever big company that you can think of. And I have been in my, in my work life and I don't feel phased at all in terms of they're better than me, I'm, I'm nothing compared to them. All those insecure feelings that I used to have are completely gone. I swear, if that's something that keeps you up at night feeling like you're not good, you're not good compared to other people, you're too short, you're too fat, you're too ugly, you're never gonna you know, be a lovable person. My advice is to try this out, to show yourself that you are, you are capable of way more than you think. You are capable then way more than you think. When I first started, Full disclosure, I'm still a white belt with three stripes. I have no idea when my blue belt is coming and I don't even care. I really don't. I don't care about the color of the belt. I care about the journey. Because in the beginning, when I was progressing, I started caring a lot about the stripes and I'm like, ooh, I want my first stripe. Ooh, I want my second stripe. Ooh, I want my third stripe. All that means nothing. It means everything and it means nothing at the same time. Because you get your stripe and you still are learning. It's you against yourself every day. So you could be a white belt that taps a bunch of blue belts and purple belts and you might not get a belt. You might not get a color belt or even a stripe because it is you against yourself. Stripes mean how are you progressing against yourself. And that is why in everyday life, I believe that this sport can be applicable to whatever situation you're in. You're not getting that promotion at work. Well, are you trying to be better than everybody else? Or are you trying to be a better version of yourself every day? So you have to be able to learn how to advocate for that and not care about the bells and whistles that come along. This is a good snapshot of how I feel two years in. 
I don't know how I'm gonna feel in the next two, five, 10 years, but I could safely say, as long as my body is healthy and able to withstand what I'm doing, I am going to do this for the rest of my life for the rest of my ability to be able to do it. I love this. I love jujitsu more than anything right now. It has changed my life in every capacity. So I will, in a future video, go into more detail about each element of my life that has been affected by it for the better, because I think that that is important that people realize that if you're struggling, it does get better. It really does. If you can work on being the best version of yourself every day, life will get better. And it's all about these tiny little changes that you can do. Just showing up, even if you get tapped, every single time you go, you learn. I was rolling with a brand new white belt the other day, 10 times stronger than me. When I knew that I was gonna go with him, I knew deep down inside, I know that he's stronger than me, but I know that he doesn't have the technique yet. And when we roll, I tapped him a few times, right? But afterwards, I said to him something that somebody said to me. You're using all of your energy. You're not breathing properly. And you're trying really hard. Once you learn how to breathe, take your time, and use proper technique, you're going to be unstoppable. And he looked at me and he realized, wow, no one's told me that yet. I barely know what I'm doing. And if I could teach somebody that little bit of knowledge with the little bit of knowledge that I have, I'm excited for what's to come. So thank you, guys. I'm going to make more videos on this because, as you can tell, I'm very passionate. But I got to walk over to class right now. So have a great day. Have a great weekend. Have a great life. Remember, you can do way more, way more than you think you can. Bye. <sighs> hey guys, I just finished and I'm so glad that I went. I have to say, it's 1230 on Friday. I feel great. My stress levels are at an all time low. And that's something that I find myself saying more and more is that I used to be more of a baseline stressed person and worry a lot about things and it could be anything in life. And now I find myself having a very carefree attitude towards the things that used to really bring me down. So on a day like today, waking up and knowing that I had something at 11 a.m. to go do, it gave me a little bit of a, a skip in my step. I was excited all night last night to know that I can do it in the morning or the morning-ish and then spend the rest of the day relaxing, coasting into the weekend where I'll probably go to more classes, let's be honest. But that's another thing that I really implore you to try if jujitsu is something that you're interested in is are the days that you feel that you can't do it or you don't want to do it are the best days to roll and the best days to go because you will start training your mind and body to be excited because you'll start seeing that even if you just show up half the 99% of the stress is getting in the car and driving there and putting yourself in a situation where you're showing up, the rest of it comes very easily to the body and to the mind once you put yourself in the right situation. I just believe so many of us hold ourselves back based on the fear. We don't feel like we're good enough. We might feel too tired. We might feel like, oh, I don't want to do it. But Think about it. If you keep doing that throughout your life, you're just going to have a series of days that you don't do anything instead of a series of progress days. And I really do believe wholeheartedly that the magic comes from putting yourself in uncomfortable positions. I talked about it in one of my other videos that there's power and discomfort. There's no better way to equate it to an art or a sport than something like this. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. I feel amazing right now and I'm so glad that I did it. I'm going to go try to find some relaxing stuff to do because I feel great. And I really look forward to having more conversations with all of you about this kind of stuff because I really do believe that if everybody did jujitsu in the world, the world would be a better place. And I know that I know how crazy that sounded, but when you really think about what I said before about egos and about people that need to prove things, once you get your ego checked at the door, you get tapped out by a guy that's 130 pounds and you're 200 pounds, you get to, sh you get to see firsthand what it's like and you get to feel firsthand what it's like and you'll have a new respect for everybody that you see. Somebody asked me the other day, quick side note, somebody asked me the other day, um, what do you think when you see people walking down the street? Do you think that you're tougher than them? And I say, absolutely not. I think everybody that I look at, I pretend that they're a black belt because so many people come into the academy that look like normal people and when they put their gi on and they put their belt on and it's black, it tells you right there, don't mess with people. Don't walk around thinking that you're better than people. It's the wrong attitude. All right? All right, guys. That's it. Bye.